Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. This is the Chronicles AFC Daily and on today's edition we'll be talking Wilfred Zaha uh, with my guest Harvey Jones, well-known Crystal Palace fan and vlogger. We'll be talking Yasin Brahimi, we'll be talking Jared Bowen, uh, Nabil Fakir and Arsenal's new kit now, we are into July, so for me, that signifies that we're officially in the 2019-2020 season. So that means we've made a few changes. As you can see, completely different overlay here. Let me know what you think about it if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're listening via the audio, uh, big shout out to you guys too, but it won't make any difference. Uh, you'll still be enjoying the content in the same way. But for our uh, you know, listeners or viewers sorry, that are watching via video, We've made some changes. Let me know what you think. Now, I'm going to save the Wilfred Zaha talk for a little bit later on when I am, of course, joined by Harvey Jones. Uh, it be interesting to get the Crystal Palace view on everything that's gone on in the last couple of days. So we're going to begin by talking about Yasin Brahimi. Now, reports emerged yesterday that the Porto winger or former Porto winger um, is on the move. He's failed to agree terms with the Portuguese outfit and uh, when Algeria's African Cup of Nations campaign comes to an end he's reportedly going to be making a move to the Premier League and specifically to Arsenal apparently he is very close to joining us um, on a free transfer because as I said he didn't agree new terms with the Portuguese outfit um, but you know Brahimi's been linked with clubs in the past too in the Premier League and nothing's ever really materialised. Some of the other clubs that he's said to be uh, attracting interest from are Manchester United, Everton and Wolves. But according to these reports, Arsenal have won the race to sign him. Now, the reports also suggest that we fought off competition from Fenerbahce, Galatasaray and Besiktas, the three Turkish clubs who all had offers rejected by Brahimi. Um, a Bola, who is the people that are breaking the news or broke the news initially, say that Arsenal will pay Brahimi around about three and a half million as a signing on bonus, uh, with the announcement set to be made after Algeria are eliminated from the African Cup of Nations. Last season, Brahimi scored 13 goals and created nine more in 49 games in all competitions. It's really strange this, isn't it? Because it's like the 1st of July has come along and all of a sudden Arsenal have money. You know, first of all, you know, we, we had that uh, bid reportedly um, that we made for Wilfred Zaha, which we'll come on to a little bit later on. I know that's the big news. I know that's what's on everybody's lips. But like I said, we're saving that for when Harvey Jones joins us. But it seems that Arsenal perhaps have a little bit more um, in the kitty than we initially thought. I know Brahimi would be a free transfer, but Brahimi is said to want um, a substantial wage and a signing on fee. So, um, you know, it's not something you'd do if you were completely cash strapped. I guess it would be one or the other. Perhaps Arsenal are looking to bring in both him and Wilfred Zaha. Only time will tell. Let me know what you guys think on Yassine Brahimi in the comments section below. Is he somebody that you'd like to see come to Arsenal? Is it worth having a punt considering that he is available on a free transfer? You know, the signing on fee wouldn't be anything more than sort of three to five million pounds, which is, of course, a hell of a lot of money. But when we're talking about Arsenal in the transfer window and we're talking about the grand scheme of things and modern day football, it's not a lot at all, is it? According to reports, Arsenal are ready to move for Jared Bowen after extensively scouting the whole City winger. Reports say, anyway, what do you think of that? Jared Bowen of Hull City. He caught the Arsenal's eye, supposedly, uh, during last season, which saw him score 22 goals in the championship. Now, I'm not sure about this one, because if I'm honest, I haven't seen anything of Jared Bowen. I haven't watched a great deal of the championship, uh, particularly last season. Don't know a great deal about him. And, and, you know, it was initially reported that he would be sort of a cheaper option uh, rather than a, an approach for Wilfred Zaha. But then we heard later on in the day that Arsenal had made a bid. So conflicting reports there in, in, in some aspects. But whole value Bowen at £15 million. Arsenal are eyeing up a deal for approximately £12 million. They feel that that would be enough uh, to 
you know, to, to prize him away. Arsenal apparently have been watching this player since January and consider the Englishman as a huge talent. However, Tottenham are also said to be interested. Now, whilst Emery's first choice is thought to be Zaha, Arsenal need Palace to dramatically lower their asking price for the forward. So, um, you know, this could be a more uh, economical option, but is it as will it be? Sorry, as an will it be an option that is as effective? Mincing my words there. Let me know what you think on Jared Bowen in the comments section below. Like I said, can't give you a great deal of insight on this player. Not seen a, a lot of him other than a few highlight reels here and there. Uh, but he's certainly rated very highly. And Arsenal are said to be interested. Apparently, Nabil Fakir has been offered to Arsenal for a cut price fee of just £30 million. The 25-year-old, of course, came close to joining Liverpool last summer for around about £58 million, But the deal collapsed at the last minute due to some concerns over his fitness. Uh, Fakir stayed with, with Lyon and made 39 appearances last summer, scoring 12 goals. Um, so how genuine those fitness concerns were, I, I don't know. But Fakir now just has one year left on his contract with Leon, and the Mirror are reporting that Leon will be willing to accept thirty million for their captain this summer, and have offered him to Arsenal for that price. Of course, Arsenal wouldn't be the only club interested in Nabil Fakir, though. Apparently, AC Milan are keen. Liverpool could be tempted uh, to enter the fray once again. Um, but it, you know, with Arsenal. It now in pursuit of, of Wilfred Zaha, um, you know, people like Fakir, people like Jared Bowen, you know, they offer a, a more affordable alternative, I suppose. But, you know, whether you're getting as much quality, I, I don't know. I can't really tell you in terms of Jared Bowen, in terms of Nabil Fakir, he's certainly a good player. Um, whether he's top, top class, I'm not entirely sure. But, you know, the, the fact that clubs like Liverpool are, are circling him does tell you that you know there is something there so we'll have to hold off and see on that but it seems that these deals you know can be done for the right money and if Arsenal fail in their pursuit of Wilfred Zaha then you know of course these provide some some decent alternatives but let's see how that one develops not f much further on that one uh, at the minute when uh it was when Liverpool pulled out Jean Michel Olas, who is of course the Lyon president. He turned around and said that he didn't feel that the knee was actually really why Liverpool pulled out of the deal. He said, uh, you know, personally, I do not think it was the real reason. I think it was one of the arguments that was used on Liverpool's side. So perhaps Liverpool just had a change of heart and used that as an excuse. I don't know. Nabil Fakir did play 39 times last season, so uh, you know his injury problems can't be that bad, I suppose. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, just a report doing the rounds that Nabil Fakir has been offered to Arsenal. Would you take him? Would you prefer uh, spending less money on someone like Nabil Fakir um, as opposed to, to Wilfred Zaha, for example, and going out and strengthening defensively? For me, that is a major, major priority. Um, you know, if we can strengthen defensively and bring in a Zaha or a Fakir, then I'm happy. But, you know, realistically, is that uh, is that feasible? Can Arsenal afford to do both of those things? We'll have to wait and see. Time will tell on that too, I suppose. I am now joined on the line by a well-known Crystal Palace fan and vlogger. It's Harvey Jones. Harvey, welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna. You have been on before. Uh, last season, I believe, when we were looking at the Crystal Palace Arsenal game. Um, yeah. And I, I, I've called you back because I really want to get a Crystal Palace perspective on the whole Wilfred Zaha thing, what were your initial feelings when you heard that A, Arsenal are interested and B, that Wilfred Zaha probably wants to leave? Um, well, first of all, thanks for having me back. I really appreciate you getting in touch with me. Um, uh, with the whole Zaha thing, it's um, it's been tricky because since the end of the season, I think any Palace fan would say it's, uh, it's clear that um, he was going to get interest and that it was going to be very hard. It's going to be very hard to keep him over the summer. Um I, when I heard Arsenal had co come in for him or were very interested in him, I thought that is probably one of the clubs that could realistically have him in the side. I think I was looking at other sides like Spurs, like uh, obviously Chelsea can't buy him at the moment, but I feel like he would stay in London. And if he wants European football, Arsenal are one of the few clubs that can realistically offer it because there's 
potentially a space there in the team for him. Um, the only problem I think that in terms of a deal going through would have been the transfer budget. Like, would they? I, I still now don't think that they can realistically afford him. Um, what we're asking, I know there was the 40 million bid that was put in, and in my opinion, that was a bit of a joke. Um, because <laughs> realistically, we're, we're going to be looking around the 80 million pound mark, and not necessarily because he's an 80 million pound player, but because he is Palace's, and a lot of Palace fans would say the same, he is our greatest ever player. You know, the greatest player ever to play for our club. I think a lot of fans would agree with me there. So when you have someone of that talent that the fans adore, that is that crucial to the team, like literally having Zahar in the side guarantees our survival. Um, and then without him in the team, it then comes into, you know, it then starts looking a bit more dangerous. When, when you have a player that, that is that important to a side, you're going to have to pay a lot of money for him, even if he's not worth that money. He he's that crucial to the team. He's he's worth eighty mil to plus two Palace. Um, so that is why I think it's going to be hard for Arsenal necessarily to offer what we're looking for. Um, obviously, a spanner in the works would be the comments from Zahar's brother um, that came out recently. Yeah, and that, that's not helpful to you guys, is it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, to be honest, it's it's quite it's quite annoyed me a bit because I don't know. What, it's it's it, when a sibling gets involved in it and he's nothing to do with like the agent or you know anything necessarily to do with the transfer process. It is quite frustrating because it, it only it can only co- make things messy, you know, in, the, in 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 future negotiations. It's not it's not exactly going to make it any smoother. Um, plus, you've got to I, I, just because I'm a Palace fan, I've got to consider the truth in it um, because at the moment he's out in AFCON Zahar and you know I, t- I think until Zahar gets back from AFCON um, I, c- I can't see any real progress being made until then so I do think it's it's going to drag on for um, quite a few weeks yet in my opinion but um, when you hear stuff like that from his brother and it's like confirmed quotes and things like that it is going to be hard to keep him obviously it's going to be hard but at the end of the day, Arsenal have to pay the money we're asking. Um, we, we're in no position, you know, we, we, we were in the position. He signed a new five-year deal last summer with Palace Sahar, making him the most, uh, the highest paid player at the club, 150 grand a week, I believe he's on for Palace now. And so he's still got four years left of that deal. And, you know, we're, we're, in, no, we're in no position to get bullied over this. We're, we're, we've got all the cards, you know, on our side. We, we should just stay firm, stay strong and, and not let him go for any less than the money that we're looking for. But but Harvey, doesn't that change when the player himself is... And I know that Zaha hasn't said it himself. I know that it's come from his brother at this point and I can understand why that's yeah. frustrating from a Palace fan. But doesn't there come a point where as a club you have to say, right, this guy doesn't want to play for us anymore we may not get what we initially set out to get for him, but if we can get a decent amount, it's better to let him go than to hold on to him. Is that not fair? Um, No, I I get where you're coming from, but I honestly think that, as I said, even even if Zaha is is under the impression and that he want, we know that he put in the long term he wants to play European football. We we know that, and that at some eventually at some point he is going to leave Palace. I don't I don't think any Palace fan can you know can question that. The thing is, I I, I really think that whether he wants to move or not, it is whatever, if he wants to move, it's not going to change Palace's stance on on the matter. They have to stay, you know, stay firm with their, their, you know, their decision because Zahar would know himself if he leaves Palace uh, for say a realistic figure, maybe 50, 60 million. Um, You've got to remember there's a a sell-on clause that goes to United as well, about 20%. That's got to be brought into consideration. You then got to think, who do we bring in that... that We're never going to be able to bring someone in who is of the quality or of the importance to Palace that Zahar is. We're never going to get someone of that sort of um, talent and, you know, love from the fans. So we've got to bring in a a player that's as close to that and can offer the similar thing as Wilf Wilf can offer Palace. Um, And that's going to be hard. Um, obviously, to do for a club of our level because we're Zaha's playing well above our level at the moment. So all of this has to be brought into consideration. It, it's it's all good for if Wilf wants to leave, that that's fair enough. But Palace have to, you know, really plan this out and make sure that everything is right. Because if anything isn't right, then they can't afford to let him go. They have to stay strong, strong on what they believe and what the club needs. Um, 
And that's why I think that even if he says he wants to go and he, he, he you know, that no formal transfer request has been put in or, tra- you know, from Sahar or anything like that. Um, so until we see more movement on that, I, I don't think that, that there's any issue with that at the moment. I mean, f- from my perspective, from an Arsenal point of view, I'd like to see Wilfred Zaha come to the club. Of course, mm-hmm. I would. I think that Arsenal clearly had a problem in the wide areas last season. There was a real lack of quality in those positions. And, and more so because the players that we did have in those positions are always inclined to cut inside. You know, if you play Mkhitaryan there, if you play Ozil there, Iwobi yeah. there, they all like to come inside and, and be involved in the play. And for me, Zaha, whilst he can play as a centre forward, he's shown that particularly away from home. You yeah. know, for me, it's important to get someone that is comfortable on that left-hand side, can cut inside and take the ball and, and run at people and get into the box and into dangerous positions. That's exactly what Zaha brings to the table. But if spending a, a ridiculous amount of money on Wilfred Zaha prevents Arsenal from strengthening defensively, which is where our real problems lay, then I'm not completely behind you know, this move. And Mm -hmm. I just feel, and I don't know what you think about this, I just feel that for, I know that a club will always start the bidding lower than what they expect to pay. I think that's common negotiation practice. Do you know what I mean? That's that's something that most clubs would do. But I just think for Arsenal to have made an offer of £40 million, they know that they've got into Zaha's head. They know that, you know, Crystal Palace could be in a position now where they'll be stuck with a player who doesn't want to be there. And I feel like Arsenal feel they can get this deal done for a lot less than 80 million. Because if you think about where you're saying Palace's valuation is 80 million and Arsenal are bidding at 40, 40 million pounds is a long way to come, isn't it? In terms of meeting in the middle. So I just get the impression that maybe Arsenal have turned his head to the point now where they feel that they can really force Palace into letting him go for around £50 million. And I think that £50 million, and you'll disagree, of course, as a Palace fan, and I completely expect you to, <laughs> but I think £50 million is a, is a relatively fair price for someone like Wilfred Zaha. When you consider what City paid for Mares, who, in my opinion at the time, was the best player outside of the top six. Maybe that's Zaha now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's what Man City paid for, for Mares, And then, you know, It's just, for me, when you look at the the £80 million or the £100 million figure that some people are throwing around, Cristiano Ronaldo joined Juventus for less than that. And I know Cristiano Ronaldo is sort of coming towards the twilight of his career, but Mm. just the commercial uh, weight that somebody like Ronaldo has alone is worth that money. So, you know, to, to put them in the same price bracket for me just makes no sense. Eden Hazard... Is another one. He's gone to Real Madrid for what yeah. twenty uh, ninety five million or whatever it is. Again, coming into the last year of his contract, but I rate Eden Hazard as a far better player than Wilfred Zaha. So I just think that the fee that Palace are asking is a little bit over the top. But I also see your point of view where you're saying that it's about what he's worth to the particular club. Yeah, and that, so that's... I get that. Yeah, that's that's the main point, really. I think the you know the most hardcore Palace fans will acknowledge that he isn't worth eighty million realistically, but to, to that's to other clubs. You know, to Crystal Palace, he's worth eighty mil plus easy because he guarantees our survival in the Premier League, and that's worth more than eighty mil to any club. So when you have a player, as I said, the greatest player in the club's history, we, it's happened before. You know, Ian Wright was our greatest player, went to Arsenal. Um, we probably didn't get the right fee at the time for him then either. And he, he forced to remove two, from what I believe. Um, and, you know, it, it, we've got to make sure that we don't let the same thing happen. We can't be bullied over this price because we need to, we need to make sure. And the sell-on fee um, to United as well is huge in this as well. So that's another reason why it's so high. We've got to bring that into consideration. But that that is the, the main you know, the main reason for the price being that high. He's just, he's too valuable to us to let go. And we've said before, he's not for sale. I know there's a, whether Zaha wants to leave or his, his brother saying he wants to leave as well, um, puts a spanner in the works. But at the end of the day, Palace has said multiple times he's not for sale. So if you're coming in for a player who's not for sale, it's going to, you're going to have to pay, you know, over, you know, he's going to be overpriced for that reason. Yeah. That's fair. That's absolutely fair. I, I'd like to see, I'd be interested to see, I should say, how this one is going to turn out because sure, I think yeah. there are alternatives out there for Arsenal in their search for a winger that would cost a lot less money and, and probably allow us to strengthen in other areas. 
Um, but I must admit, when the news came out yesterday, when I got the notification on my phone, I think it was Sky Sports that yeah. broke the news, I was as surprised as anybody because all we've heard all summer is how Arsenal's transfer budget is very limited. So then to go and make a bid for most of your transfer budget on one player when we clearly need so much uh, strengthening is really surprising. But, you know, perhaps they'll pull in the wool over our eyes. Perhaps that leak was yeah, maybe, was not maybe accurate. More money, than, more money than you first thought. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Harvey, thank you so much for joining me, mate. Really, really appreciate it. Right, thank you, wanna... you again for having me. No problem at all, mate. Do you want to let our listeners know how they can follow you and the fantastic work that you do, social media. I know you've got a YouTube channel too. Yeah, um, so Twitter is at Red and Blue site. Um, it's mainly all Palace stuff on there, but I do tweet about football stuff in general and anything that, you know, obviously interests me. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's my Twitter. YouTube is um, Red and Blue site, uh, YT. Um, and that's, again, it's mainly Palace content, but I've done some stuff recently um, with Imperial Wolf FC, um, Louis Beneventi from 100% Chelsea. It's his team. So there's a, it's football content in general, but it's really exciting time at the moment. Um, a lot of transfer talk, etc. And obviously there'll be more Zaha stuff on my channel if any Arsenal fans are interested to hear on my thoughts. Great stuff. And head over and make sure that you do give Harvey a follow. Harvey, thank you so much, mate. And we'll speak again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. So lots of talk about uh, players that we could have. But let's talk about something now that we do have, and that's a brand spanking new Adidas kit. I was down at the kit launch yesterday. Um, and whilst I absolutely love the kit, and I perhaps didn't really like the Puma ones all that much, I felt like the, the launch was a little bit underwhelming. Puma pulled out all the stops. Adidas's one was a little bit like, you know, meh. Been there for five minutes. What else is there to do? Met Ray Parler quickly. David Seaman was there too. And then after that, that's pretty much it. Off home we went. But, um, you know, I, I do really like the kit, I've got to say. And I'm glad we've returned to Adidas. I love the three stripes. I think Adidas football kits are the best. I think they're really iconic. I love the stripes. I love the way they've included the stripes too without really, you know, veering away from what is traditionally Arsenal. Um Absolutely love it. Love the collar. Love the trimmings on the sleeves too. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have some shiny new players uh, to be wearing it next season. That brings us to the end of today's Chronicles AFC Daily. Slightly longer version uh, in light of the Wilfred Zaha news. My thanks to Harvey Jones for joining me. And we'll be back tomorrow with more. Or we might be back later if anything else happens, if any other uh, news breaks you know, that's what we're doing here this summer at the Chronicles AFC. We're trying to get news out to you as quick as possible. We'll be jumping on things uh, as soon as they come out, hopefully. Uh, but fingers crossed you've enjoyed this. And let us know what you think about the new layout, the new overlays. Um, and uh, we will be working hard to enhance that uh, in time for the new season. So a few tweaks here and there still to be made. But let us know what you think of the new concept if of course you're watching on video don't forget to hit like subscribe or leave us a review if you're listening on itunes or any other audio platform and until next time take care